Hey everybody, I'm John Fort from CNBC and this is a little Fort Knox extra for you. Wanted to uh, give you a full look at my interview with Global Foundry's CEO, Tom Caulfield. Well, first, uh, John, thanks for having me on the show today. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a really important question. Uh, the, the reason why I have confidence that we're not going to have this burst of capacity and, and create some of the old cyclicality of our industry, it's, it's uh, very simple. Um, this industry has to double in the next eight years. Uh, that's simple. It has to double across all process technologies or somewhere specifically where you feel like you've got an edge. So, so specifically, it took 50 years for the semiconductor industry to be about a half a trillion dollars. And the demand that society, the world needs for this accelerated digital transformation is to double that in the next uh, eight to 10 years. Now, it's it's all technologies. It's 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 memory. It's flash. It's DRAM. It's what we call pervasive semiconductors, not just single digit net nanometer. Look, look what happened to our industry uh, with the advent of the smartphone 15 years ago. We went from a compute centric deployment of semiconductors. It was all about computing, and then not quite overnight, but over the course of 15 years, everything developed the need for semiconductors, new use cases. And so it used to be 70% of the market was compute centric. That's only 30% of the market now. 70% is this broad pervasive use of, of semiconductors. That's where GF plays and that's why it's really important. You know, we make the necessary investments to continue to create those feature rich chips for these amazing applications. You know, connectivity, secure connectivity, uh, uh, edge compute. Those are the type of areas we play. Talk to me specifically about domestic manufacturing in the US. Uh, there are concerns about the ability to source the right components to manufacture stuff here. There are some concerns about uh, technology and independence, given what we've just been through with the pandemic. How does your build out in New York address those things? Well, I think the fundamental issue that's that's being addressed is uh, today, 48% 40 of semiconductor demand, that half a trillion dollars I spoke about before, is comes through U.S. headquartered companies. So plenty of demand for the U.S. to manufacture. But we've found ourselves today where we're only 12% of the manufacturing, uh, you know, the global imprint from the U.S. manufacturing, only 12%. And that's the imbalance that uh, the U.S. is trying to fix. And they're, they're trying to fix it for economic security, supply chain security, you know, national security. And what, what they need to do, and they have begun, is to create industrial policy that enables U.S. manufacturing. What else needs to happen to accelerate that process? Because I've been talking to Apple and other companies about this for it seems like more than a decade about how it's not just as simple as making one thing here. There's a whole supply chain that needs to be robust. There's expertise that needs to be present in the U.S. for not just the manufacturing of one component, but for overall assembly uh, and testing all that to take place. How much is all of that accelerating? Look, I think that was a really important point that uh, Secretary Raimondo made at our event today. She was here with uh, Senator Schumer. Uh, it's, it's about an ecosystem. It's not enough just to make the wafers. We need to be able to process the wafers, the semiconductors after they're built into chips and then chips get packaged. It's about having raw wafers that we take into our factory to create processes on. So you need a holistic approach in supporting the industry so you can have an end to end supply chain. By the way, most of that exists in the U.S. It's just a question of scale and, 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 and content. So you can invest to build this. We didn't get here overnight, so we're not going to fix this overnight. But you need a concerted effort with these types of investments. Today, GF took its first step to be part of that equation for the country. Is it your feeling that we need uh, more domestic chip manufacturing and fabs uh, from individual companies uh, fewer or does it matter? Well, if you look at the industry situation, there's only five foundries left of any scale. So the fewer is already is already there. We just have to leverage the fewer. Remember, uh, in our industry today, about 70 percent of all the semiconductor foundry manufacturing is concentrated in uh, you know Taiwan, China region of the world. And I think that creates some of the supply chain risk and issues. And so for global foundries, yes, we want to invest in U.S., but we also want to invest in our global footprint. Not too long ago, about a month ago, we announced an expansion in our Singapore facility. We're spending in our Dresden facility in the EU to expand that capability. And today, the announcement in the U.S. So we, we have an obligation to grow our footprint 
around the world, that creates supply chain risk mitigation, that creates a, a healthy uh, supply for our customers in the regions they operate in. Long, long ago, Global Foundries was part of AMD. Uh, AMD rival, frenemy, really more rival, Intel has announced an intent to move into the foundry business, both domestically and internationally. How does that affect you? Well, first and foremost, it's a great recognition of how important foundry is to this to the world economy, let alone the electronics and semi industry. The second thing, from what I understand in their strategy, is their focus is going to be on that single digit nanometer, on the, the, the seven, five nanometer type solutions, which is about 30% of the market, an important part of the market nonetheless, but doesn't have any way it competes with us. So it's great that they're joining the foundry space. We need more manufacturing and it doesn't provide any uh, dynamic for us to, uh, to, to worry about. So then what should we make of Intel's rumored interest in uh, acquiring global foundries? Is there anything to that? Have you heard of any approaches or have you been approached? Well, I was not ready for that question. I'm just kidding. you. <laughs> Look, uh, that, there's nothing to that story. We, we said that Friday. I'll say it again today. You know, we're constant. We're focused on executing our business uh, each and every day. And, and that's really front and center for all of us. Uh, so what areas do you expect as we hopefully come out of this pandemic, though uh, we don't, of course, want to call that too soon, given what we're seeing happening around the world and in the markets. What areas do you expect to see most demand in uh, as we move forward over the next half of the year and into 2022? So, you know, first and foremost, we have to get the auto companies back on par, right? The, the, the value destruction for the auto industry uh, some have it as at $100 billion, some higher than that. And just the, the cars that could not be built and sold. So we have to get that supply chain in balance. And then after that, I think this back to this pervasive, I can't pick one application, but I could talk about mega trends, data center growth. Right? Uh, the Internet of Things continue to put more and more content. You know, we're going to have from three Internet of Appliances, Internet of Things appliances per person growing to 10 over the next five years. So it's just this broad deployment that everything we have has silicon in it, semiconductors in it, and the amount of silicon is growing. Just think about the electrification of the cars. Right? The, the, the bill of material in, in, in cars is growing you know, 15% a year, uh, just in autonomous driving, electrification of cars, and all the other elements that semiconductor brings to the features of automobiles. In fact, today, we had a panel discussion with some uh, industry auto executives just talking about that. Uh, at what point does it make sense for you to tap the public markets? Oh, yes. <laughs> Look, we always evaluate our strategic uh, alternatives, and we spoke before about timing of that, and, and, and that hasn't changed. I think your, your point, though, is at some point to be able to have access to uh, uh, the public markets to accelerate our growth, we'll probably have to take that into consideration at some point soon. Uh, given, and maybe you can uh, articulate a little bit more of that, here, given what you said about there being a shortage in the number of foundries right now, uh, the demand that's coming down the pike, the uh, critical nature of chips to so many industries beyond compute now, why wait? Look, we're in no rush. We, 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 we would have to go with a, with a purpose. It's not, you know, it, it has to have a meaning that we're going to be benefiting from entering the public markets. And, you know, at the time when we think we need access to the public markets to, to accelerate the growth of our company, it would probably make the most sense. So we're, we're patient about what we're doing as you know, we're, we're ongoing concern that's doing uh, you know, important things for the world right now. And then finally, what, what do you expect this to do for New York specifically? It's an area where you've been for a long time. This is a big expansion, not only of your uh, existing fab, but then doubling capacity. Yeah, I, I think this is at the heart of these private public partnerships. Uh, they really are investments. When the, when the government co-invests, they get a, a huge economic return for the for the for the jobs it creates for the flow of money through the local economy. I mean, the capital region with global foundries has never been the same once we put our our huge you know our facility that's already quite large, uh, you know, three thousand employees. These are high paying uh, jobs, and it just creates you know the velocity of money through the economy that creates all other jobs, right? And 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 support for these for these facilities as well as just the local economy. And so these 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 what this will do for the state, this next round of investment, we'll do that all over again. There's a lot of excitement about what pretends to be, you know, a doubling of everything we've already accomplished in the region. 
and that is Global Foundry's CEO, uh, Tom Caulfield, once again joined me earlier today uh, talking about the expansion in their fab facility, existing fab facility in New York, and the plan to double capacity there. Also, once again, knocking down those rumors about Intel's interest in the company, saying there's nothing to that, and talking about a potential IPO, saying that at some point that will be needed to accelerate growth. But at this point, Global Foundries appears to be in no rush to do that. I'm John Fort, CNBC and TechCheck for Fort Knox. See you again real soon.